Hey crafters, uh, welcome to another edition of the DM's Craft. Now you know how we we're always uh, kind of blurring the lines between 3D and 2.5D. Some of us like to take the 3D a little further, some of us like to scale it back to more 2.5D so it's easier to play at the table. But you can, have, you can have your cake and eat it too. In this video I'm going to kind of show how you can do backdrops, how you can set those up at one end of the table so you're not blocking the view, but then as the players come in they see this, this really neat uh, visual. So, Let's go to the table. I'm going to show you how to do this super cheap. This is dirt cheap. So let's go to the table and I'll show you how I did that. Hey guys, this uh, project just starting out with some cheap, cheap cardboard, and I've, you can see I've crinkled this up and bent it up, and that's going to give me some nice texture uh, when we paint this up. Now here's another piece I did. I, I cut a hole in it to make a, make a cavern, and then I used paper around the edge, and that'll give it a nice, um, a nice uh, build out and texture from the uh, the the piece itself. Now I'm going to glue that piece to the base. It's just a thin piece of cardboard, right? And now I'll start adding texture to that. So I'll just go around the paper and kind of fill in some areas. I'm going to pull up the glue gun from the base to kind of give the rock face some texture. And then, you know, when that glue goes, starts to dry, I come back and fill a little more in. Um, and you don't have to fill the whole thing in. I'm just filling some of the crevices in with the, the glue. Get around the, the base, blend it into the base, blend each one to the base. Go back and fill in some more. So it's just kind of a process of Filling that out. Get the uh, corrugation at the top. That'll cover that up. A um, little more on the cave entrance there. So just keep filling that out as a, a section dries. And there it is. Now I want to do around the edge with the hot glue and that'll kind of hide, hide the corrugation uh, on the base. So I'll just go around with that and then add some texture to the back. Same as the front. So I'll just pull that up and down. Um, and it also gives it strength too and texture. So just fill that up. Now the base, I'm going to do texture too. I'll just pull the gun on the base. I, I tend to do like in kind of circles and that kind of fills that in um, or short, short pulls. And that'll give it a nice texture so it's not just a flat piece of cardboard. So there we go, cave entrance. Now here's another one. Here's the wall I did, and I just you know did around the edge of the base there, uh, around the edge of the cardboard, and then just pulled up the glue gun from the base. Got some texture on there, and uh, you can really see that nice texture uh, with the crumpled cardboard, as well as the hot glue. Now for the next stage, I'm going to add some white glue to this. Now I'm going to put some white glue on the wall itself. And this will do a couple things. It'll strengthen it up as well as I'll drop a little bit of construction sand on that and it'll give a little bit of texture. I'm not going to put too much, just a touch. And then for the base, I'm going to add some clumps of rubble with uh, fish tank pebbles and then top it off with construction sand. And let's do the same on the back. So we'll get some nice texture. Now uh, with the cave entrance, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, paint over the uh, front with the uh, white glue and then the back so same thing I'm doing with the others now I'm going to do the rubble and uh, put some I'm going to put some on the cave entrance too so put some pebbles on there and then I'll finish that up with construction sand that also gives it weight which is really nice it holds these pieces down all right, now it's time for the painting phase. So I've got a section of wall here, and we use a gray, and uh, put it in my tray there. And I've got a natural sea sponge, which is nice because it's irregular. And I'll just load that with paint and start stippling that on. Get a really nice texture there, color. Uh, I'm going to use a, a smaller sponge too. It's it's I've cut it wedge shaped, and I'm just going to kind of get in that crevice there the, between the wall and the, the base. So that'll 
fill that in. I also want to add some more color, so I'm going to add this color called Pebble, which is kind of a cross between a gray and a tan. So I'm just going to stipple that on with a large brush, just to add some color variation. Do the back side too. And I'm going to use a burnt sienna also, and I'll just stipple that in for some more color variation. And there we go. For the last step, I'm going to use a light gray and my sea sponge. And I'm going to stipple this on the piece. And this will uh, really bring out that detail. See how that's coming out? It is a little light right now, but you'll find that it, it dries up a bit, or when it, it'll darken up a bit when it dries. There we go. Looks great. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the vid. Um, now I'm going to have a link here, right, right here, it's right here, uh, where you can go and see these walls in use. I'm not going to show them in use in this video, I've already done it in a previous video. So make sure you go to this video and you can see the walls in use. This is my modular cave system, I show how those work. So Also um, make sure to join my Facebook page or my forum, uh, lovely, lovely community there. Uh, give your Scotty a like if you did like what you've seen here today. And remember, go forth and craft. You know, Roderick started thinking, what if everything I see is a Roderick illusion and it's, I'm just in someone else's world and I'm being controlled by someone else and none of my actions are my own? Nah, that's crazy. What am I thinking?